Hello and welcome to the Charmed Life Podcast. This podcast is all about magic, metaphysics, mysticism, and the unconditional love of the universe. And I am your host. My name is Trisha Carr. As we head into this episode, which is packed full of really cool stuff, y'all, I got to say, I want to invite you to please, you know, tap that follow button or subscribe button on your podcast, whatever it is, whatever your podcast uh, platform it has, I mean, on Apple, it, it says follow, I think. They used to say subscribe and yeah. So <laughs> I would love for you to actually follow it so you get the notifications for when the new episodes come out. And then, of course, I would love to invite you to scroll down in your podcast app and leave a review. That will help so much. In addition to that, if you would share it, that would be fantastic. I have so many really cool guests coming on, and then I love to pepper in the the solo episodes where I'm teaching on something that I have channeled, something I'm channeling right now. And there's a lot of those coming up. Um, a lot of both coming up, I have to say. So, you know, I do post at least one episode per week. So um, we would love to have you here a part of this regularly. And I, met, I know many of you already are. So thank you so very much. With that said, I want to share with you also the YouTube channel where I'm posting excerpts of some of these podcasts as well as many other, you know, t- things that I'm teaching, downloading. I go live there. I'm multi-streaming. And so you can find the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Trisha Carr, and then my Instagram at Trisha Carr Charm. So uh, this is a conversation episode. I have on my guest, Amira Hall, and it's spelled A-M-I-R-A-H, like a miracle only. We took off the coal and we just put an H. <laughs> Amira is an international spirit medium and a world-class psychic mentor, intuitive life coach, author, and quantum healing pioneer. For the past 22 years, Amira has dedicated herself to providing profound insights, spiritual tools, and guidance to seekers who are going through their ascension process. After healing herself of an autoimmune illness and after having a near-death experience while traveling in Egypt, and we talk all about that in this episode, along with being the creator of a couple of really fantastic programs, one is called Reveal, a chakra healing intensive program, and another is called Intuitive Mastery Training and Intuitive Mastery Third Eye and Beyond. And these programs assist people in mastering life on every level. And she has a new book. It's called The Essential Guide to Spiritual Awakening, What I Learned from My NDE, Near-Death Experience. And she is also talking about, she talks about in this episode that there is an upcoming hosted sacred journey trip to Egypt in uh, October of 2022. So we get into a lot of stuff and I just enjoy her heart. I enjoy her groundedness and I enjoy her vision. So with that, I welcome you to this conversation with Amira Hall and I will chat with you on the other side. Well, Amira, it's so great to have you on. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I'm really excited to hear all about your work and your story. I love NDEs. So with uh, with the, all of that excitement that I'm bringing to it, I would just love to let you um, have the floor. Tell everyone about your journey, about the work that you do, all of it. We want to hear about you. Well, thank you, Trisha. Thank you so much for shining the light and holding the space for so many people on their journey. I really applaud you and honor that. So thanks. You know, I was reflecting on my own journey and I I didn't plan for this like most of us, I guess. You know, I, I was in the corporate world. I was working in sales and marketing and I was starting, I was at a point, I mean, there were lots of ups and downs and movement along the way that started before that. But this actually catapulted me, I think, into the biggest phase of my spiritual awakening. And that was, I was yearning for something more. I knew that as I was becoming more and more successful and I had more disposable income, there was something missing. Mm -hmm. And so that's what... um, spawned me, spurred me into looking for something outside. And I thought it was a spiritual journey. And that's when I found information of a group that was going to Egypt. Mm -hmm. And my curiosity was piqued and I thought, yeah, that's it. So away I went on this journey, a spiritual pilgrimage to Egypt. And I've always been a seeker, I guess. Mm -hmm. I've always been interested in the unseen world. Mm -hmm. 
you know, I was raised Catholic. There wasn't a whole lot of information in the libraries, <laughs> the school <laughs> libraries. And so, you know, it did, finally dawned on me that I had to go outside of my my zone to, to, to access some, any of this information. I had a marvelous, magical trip to Egypt. Mm -hmm. And from visions, from hearing, you know, celestial angels, to synchronicities, to creating magical moments along the way. I mean, it was just jam-packed. I mean, if anybody's interested in, you know, sort of disseminating all of what you've learned or accessing even more, Egypt is a place, definitely. Yeah. Very magical. Have you been yourself? No, uh, not oh. not in not in the body. <laughs> okay, not in the body. I come from a pre a long lineage of priestesses. I oh, think. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I'm planning an, a, a spiritual journey to Egypt. I'm taking a group this October. Oh wow! So it's really opening up. Um, anyway, that's a whole nother you know segue. But Egypt is a magical place yes. as we connect with our lineage, with previous lifetimes, mm -hmm. and step into a greater sense of who we are and who we're not. I mean, it certainly rattled my cage in terms <laughs> of, wow, I thought things were solid and all of a sudden it feels like you walk through a column or walk mm. into a space that is moving when you're standing on firm ground. So mm -hmm. lots of magic. Um, yeah, so at the end of my stay, I I was <laughs> I'm always hesitant at this part because I did something that I wouldn't normally do. And I was buying beads, that's not the part, but I was making jewelry at the time and I wanted some antiquities for my jewelry making. I found um friends of a friend that had access to some pieces and I went back to buy them. Well, in Egypt, when you buy something, especially if you know them, there's, uh, there's a sort of a little ritual, you know, you sit and you visit and you drink some coffee and you talk and you actually engage in conversation and get to know each other. That does not happen in Los Angeles. So yeah, no, I just left Southern California. I, I can tell you, this is very novel. It's different. You, visit, you know, you, you, ex, you get to know each other a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. there's really a heart connection. Mm -hmm. Then you pay. Well, mm -hmm. I had paid and they brought out a joint. And I already, I said, thank you, but I don't smoke. Um, and I don't smoke cigarettes and I didn't smoke anything else. Anyway, they erupted in just, I, I insulted them. Oh, okay. Yeah. I refused their offer of gratitude and I wasn't being unkind, but they were just insulted. So wow. Muhammad was screaming and yelling and I was getting afraid. Like I'm the only female. It's my, it was my first journey to Egypt. I didn't understand all of the cultural nuances. And so he kept saying, it's the best, it's the best. And I'm, <laughs> shouting, and I'm like, Oh gosh, well, I've tried it before and it really didn't do much for me. So if I just, this is my logic. It's like, well, if I just, you know, be polite and acquiesce, and we'll be on our, our way. Mm -hmm. Well, it didn't work like that. Do they? I'm like, I would be in trouble if they offered me bread because I can't eat gluten. <laughs> well, yeah. I'd, I'd be yeah. in trouble. Oh, I'd yeah. be in trouble, They're, probably. probably. <laughs> well, and, you know, they start to understand, like, for Westerners, when, when I'm on a tour, we advise our, our participants not to eat anything that's not cooked uh -huh. or peeled. Sure. Yeah. Okay, because, because well, we don't have the same enzymes of for the foods yep. there, of course. Our gut, yeah. our gut biome is yeah. quite different and mm -hmm. we don't want anybody sick and ruin the trip for them. Yeah. Right. We want mm -hmm. to stay safe and within some, you know, reasonable um, parameters. So anyway, there I was, I was alone. My guides, uh, we had separated a, a week before. So I acquiesced. Um, I, the joint went around twice 
and there was a circle of about 10 people. Mm-hmm. So for anybody listening, that doesn't, that's not much for each person. <laughs> right. If it's a small one, sure. Uh-huh. Yeah. It wasn't a great big cigar to yeah. do me. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, what happened was everybody bounced up and they were ready to rock and roll and leave the, the, we were in a small factory. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't get out of the chair. Mm. Um, what I know, what happened was I started to notice I was standing behind myself. Oh. I could see myself sitting in the chair and I could see everybody and everything moving in slow motion. And I could see, it was almost like a life review for everybody else in the room. Wow. And so it was, it was overwhelming for me, but again, I was like having this conversation behind myself and watching and, and trying to stay in my body. I asked for some water and my friend Juju walked towards me, opened a bottle of water and poured it in my hand. I remember bringing it towards my face and I remember thinking, oh shit, my mascara is going to run. <laughs> so it's literally the last thought. And then everything went black. Oh. Um, they t- explained to me later that they had dragged me out from under the arms out to the outside. They, they called her for a taxi, which is a pickup truck. They perched me in the pickup truck with my head perched outside the window, barreling down the road to give me oxygen. Now, keep in mind, I'm at the Valley of the Kings outside Luxor. It's It was rather primitive. Mm-hmm. And so things were extremely rustic and not all the, you know, makings of modern civilization. Um, so what happened was I started where I remember the next part is I was shooting through the cosmos like a shooting star. And I didn't know where I was headed. It was just like, if you can imagine like just seeing stars everywhere and it's black. I meditate that way a lot. I actually do that a lot in my meditation. Yes, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So I was coming back. I was seeing earth. Mm-hmm. And it was getting, I could see it way off in the distance, a small little ball. And I kept getting closer and closer and it kept getting bigger and bigger. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know where I left myself. And it's a big earth. <laughs> especially as you get close, <laughs> yeah, zoom in. And then I heard a language that I didn't recall. And then I realized, oh, I left myself in Egypt came back to the body, struggled for what felt like eons, trying to get back in my body, felt like putting on, have you ever tried on a wet wetsuit? <laughs> yes, or yes. wet clothes? Oh, it was too itchy. tight. <laughs> yeah. And it's cold and it's awful, you know? Yeah. It's not easy. It's a struggle. So that's, how, that's the best metaphor that I can use to explain how – either far out I was or how difficult it was to bring down my energy to, you know, connect into the physical dimension. Yeah. And quite honestly, it didn't really finalize for hours later. Mm -hmm. So um, at that moment, I mean, the actual experience when I, I could sense and try to open my eyes and the light was bright and I would touch my friend's arm who was sitting next to me and they all jumped like they were just freaked out that I had come back. And they, they, they fully informed me that I died. Wow. Later on, he told me my heart stopped, my breathing stopped. He was pounding on my chest with all his might. I call that Egyptian CPR. And, and, and you know, and out for oxygen. Um, he even asked me, he said, doesn't your chest hurt? And I go, no. I Later, I checked for bruising. There was nothing. Yeah. So that's that was me trying to get back in the body. Later, I just needed a toilet because mm-hmm. my gut was ready to explode. I said, where are you taking me? To the hospital, he said. Well, I, I, I knew I just needed a toilet. Now that again was a problem because we're in the Valley of the Kings in a very primitive little town. Mm-hmm. There was no Western toilets. 
there was no bathrooms that look like what we know. Yeah. So they, they brought me to his brother's flat and there I could, you know, release myself. And then that's where he just sat there and cried and cried and cried and said, you don't understand. He said, you died. Wow. But that to me is the jumping off point because when I was laying in the bed, I couldn't walk for a couple hours. I couldn't, like I wasn't all there. Um, so some people might say, you know, you were really stoned and you were hallucinating, but it was marijuana. I and there was know. nothing else? Nothing else. They, uh, they, that, they, that I can't, you know, say. We don't know for sure. They but just that's kept what... saying it's the best. <laughs> 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 I guess Egyptian pot is like supersonic. <laughs> you know, it sends you into another orbit. But that, to me, I was completely inexperienced. And this was back mm -hmm. in 1998, right? Mm -hmm. So it's there was no reference point for me. Um, I did get my body tested, went to the doctor. They told me that, you know, I had been fasting and detoxed mm -hmm. before my journey. They said, you know, your amino acids are low and you could have been dehydrated. He goes, yeah. more people die from dehydration. Mm -hmm. um, and then triggered with the pot and having had two weeks of super off the chart spiritual experiences, yeah. I yeah. was hypersensitive. Right. I, I can't, you know, I can't do THC uh, because it, it makes me actually, it opens up my energy centers too much. Yeah. And I can see the fourth dimension as, as well as I can see the third dimension. And it, it's like all of my, the way I describe it is like all of my nerve endings are, are puking. <laughs> That's yeah. what it feels like. It's, it's too much for me. And I've even had, it happened to me the last time it happened to me where it was psychoactive and that profound. I didn't die. Uh, my friend had given me some CBD honey that was not supposed to have THC and it was not psychoactive. And I had like a 10th of the amount that he normally takes. And, but I've heard that apparently CBD can be psychoactive as well. So yeah, I mean, we. Uh, I, I, th those are great explanations <laughs> for what happened to me. All I yeah. know is my world stopped yeah. and I was not the same. And yeah. yes, I did super blast open my pineal yeah. and mm -hmm. the crown chakra because yeah. what happened when I got to LA or not LA, New York, I had to fly that day. Mm -hmm. But when I got to the New York uh, airport and getting off the jetway, all I could see was walking black and white paper dolls. Oh, so gosh. I was stuck in a dimension mm -hmm. or a realm of anger and fear, a very low vibration. That's fourth. I mean, no, 4D, you know, it has, and I know you know this, I'm just saying for everyone. The fourth dimension is really like, it's a thought form reality. It's a thought and feeling scape. There's, you know, mundane stuff there. There's earthbounds there. But there's also just disjointed, disoriented, static, messed up, crap that just you know and it's not just from humans it's from other it's interdimensional it's it's basically a portal it's not a place that we just chill <laughs> and yeah. so your yeah. your body had an a reacclimated to paying more attention to the third dimension than anything else and keep in mind this was in 1998 mm -hmm. there was and so we didn't there was no research. There was none of this information or access. When I started going to different psychics and healers, trying to find out what happened to me, I knew I was radically different. I didn't dare go see a psychologist because I'm thinking they're oh, yeah. going to lock me up and throw away the key, right? Mm -hmm. Hearing voices and seeing things. Yeah. But what I realized was I was living in the land of those paper dolls. Mm -hmm. I was as much as everybody else in this reality. I had to step down and I was walking in that realm. And I think the next year and a half, not, not quite that long, but it was about a year before I realized that I'm here to access my gifts and be able to manage them, yeah. turn, turn back the chakra system and, and clear the gunk that was, you know, just hanging out um, so that I could step beyond that. Yeah. And I, I always caution people when they're doing any kind of drugs because right. you're experimenting. This is Russian roulette. It you is. Know? I, you know, and I know that plant medicine, as it's referred to, can be, there are certain people I would say it is actually a wonderful therapy, you know, whether it's psilocybin, especially I think psilocybin, you know, mushrooms, mm -hmm. not for me. I know it's 100% not for me, but I think you need to, because you need the, if you're going to use, um, 
a psychedelic or if you're going to use plant medicine, you need to have a certain kind of support, spiritual support that you've already, you know, you've already walked a lot of the journey to that door. And you know what I mean? Because you are opening a door and I'm not, and then, and that's still not everyone. So because I have had clients, I've had a few clients who did ayahuasca or they did some kind of plant medicine. And then after the experience, they actually became extremely depressed because they didn't know how to maintain access to that because they hadn't, their journey hadn't taken them up to that door. It was like they got a cheat code and now they're depressed because they can't, they can't find that realm again. They don't know how to integrate it into their life. Other people don't have that, of course. And then I think there are people like maybe you and me who are just like, the body is like, no, the frequency that we carry, our home frequency does not resonate with those, you know, with that, that kind of plant and that, you know, that's, so, I mean, yeah, that's what I think about it. It's what I've observed, I would say. And now for these messages. Creation of the outside world really does start inside. You can feel better and receive more. Miraculous shifts happen when you align your inner world with your higher self and your soul blueprint. My clients report immediate and long lasting results of the inner and outer world. I channel guidance and energy transmissions from your higher self and spirit team. As you resonate with the transmission, change occurs. In sessions and coaching, mentoring, I use my abilities of empathic channeling, hypno healing, quantum resonance healing, as well as spiritual counseling, neurolinguistic programming, and so much more. Check out my calendar for my session work and my coaching and mentoring. I would love to work in your beautiful energy. Well, I completely agree with you. In fact, the year before this experience, I had an ayahuasca experience in the jungles in Peru, mm. working with a shaman in a mm -hmm. very supportive environment. And the very first day of connecting with the ayahuasca plant, it was rather tumultuous for me. Oh. Um, I didn't vomit like a lot of people do. But I had some energy that was stuck in my pineal gland, my sixth chakra, and my head was going to crack open. They prayed over me for a couple hours trying to release the energetic block. And that's where I feel like when you say that people come back and they're depressed after their, their journey, it's because there's some energy that's blocked and stuck. And that's exactly what happened to me after the near-death experience. But back oh, to the shaman, yeah, they prayed on me and worked on me. And what I actually saw was like the spiral of gray smoke coming out of my, my pineal gland, a six chakra. And I could see exactly who it was. It was a spiritual teacher that I had been working with in San Diego. And that so, was the actual block, you mean? That, yes, that, that was a that, big part of the block to my own oh. spiritual gifts because his energy was literally plugged into my psychic abilities, my six chakra. And he was using my superpower to advance and to amplify his, which, wow. I mean, <laughs> when you have the experience and it literally blew my mind, but it was so real. And, and, and I learned so much more from that experience myself. Now, after that, the following day is when I actually saw myself coming through a portal. Um, it was a diamond-shaped pattern, and they told me it was a stargate. And that's when uh, I got... I've been working with... The, I laughed because I've been working with a diamond, with a stargate lately. And it's... In, but go ahead. I just had to yeah, laugh. I know. Isn't it great? Acknowledge I mean, the synchronicity. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, well, and the impression, the information I had at that moment was that I came to earth as a star seed yeah. and it was an opening and it was at the early stages of Egypt. And that was the information that told me, okay, next trip... I have to go to Egypt. That was my yeah. next step in the journey. What was interesting is after that experience, I cried for two days. Which, wait, which one with the ayahuasca? After the ayahuasca yeah. with me coming through mm -hmm. as a stargate because the stargate closed behind yeah. me oh. and I felt my family had left me behind mm. and my star seed lineage had really, I, I, know, I knew later that it was an agreement 
that I made that I would come here. And yes, the Stargate would close. Like there's no going back now. Your soul's here incarnated and you're, you're embarking on that journey to, you know, evolve and to hold the vibration and remembering who you truly are on the journey. But that was heavy. That was, that was really, it took me some time to process through that to validate myself. And, um, you know, it's still, it still hasn't been an easy journey of recognizing, you know, the ego can be, you know, boosted by saying, okay, I'm a star seed, big, big freaking deal, you know, <laughs> you gotta I mean, walk. <laughs> and now you're a human. So it's like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's actually the the point. I know it is. And there is, you, you do see that if, if we can say uh, with the younger folks, and I don't, I don't necessarily even mean younger in age. I mean, maybe newer on their journey, but yeah, where, where the ego is sort of, and I mean, honestly, the ego can try and uh, does always try to own things and it tries to own your spiritual journey over and over again. D don't you see, do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, and so it's yeah. like star seed. Perfect. I'm special. I don't have to do anything or I have to, you no, know, whatever, yeah. you know, but the fact is that the, having the information really is meant to motivate us to continue to do this part of the journey. You know what I mean? Like this, yes, maybe we have we, we have starseed origins and we have different kinds of futures as well. But this is the point. This is the purpose of the soul at this time. 100% human as well as other things. But you know what I mean? Like that's the point of, of perspective for the for the soul right yeah and 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 you know falling into this state of amnesia to remember yeah. the journey to remember why we've come here to remember this frequency in my near death experience it was like i stepped into a quantum field of of love and yeah. well every it permeates absolutely everything now that's great storytelling and it's great because so many people are copy and pasting from other people's you know experience right but it's another thing when you plug into it and feel it and resonate and you yeah. words don't quantify it words can't explain it yeah and and i forget myself because i am human right yeah. i want I want to remember, of course I do and and there's moments of it where it's stronger than others. Um, like when I'm able to get into that completely neutral zone and quiet my system and plug back in, I can easily access it, but it's not without, you know, a challenge. Yeah. The, no, it's the, incredible challenge. The ego is, you know, I guess that's really what we're here to do. Well, first of all, the ego is trying to tell us that something else is more special when in fact that quantum field of love that permeates would say that this human experience, like it's humbling us to realize that the human experience is as spectacular as all of the other experiences, of course. And, you know, like that's, that's the remembering is I think maybe there were times where we didn't have times as in other lives where the ego wasn't as strong a pull on us, but the challenge pushing against and remembering in spite of the ego is going to be such an amazing expansion, you know? Yeah, and I think with the awakening that's occurring on the planet now and the frequency shifting, I mean, I'm probably, you're experiencing the same thing. There's some ebbs and flows and, and, and it feels pretty shaky at times and there is no manual, right? Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and so I just, with all my work and all my effort is to help people to get grounded. Uh -huh. And even in this, in this wonderment of all of where we can go and how we can explore being out of the body, I think the biggest challenge is for us to be present and, and to yeah. be grounded and be turned on. Have, yeah. I mean, I don't mean, you know, turn I know on. what you mean. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> light, you know, our light shining and our yeah. awareness sharp and tuned into the subtleties that are shifting. Yeah. That, that, that's becoming the biggest challenge right now. Yes, that's tr so much. <laughs> the tease, you know, it ha has a lot to do with the fact that we have so much artificial frequency coming at us all the time. I mean, you know, because we're in the information age and there's, but there's, it's so much more than that. It, it is really, and I've made videos and podcasts about this. It's like the fourth dimension is starting to leak into and blend with the third so that, you know, everybody's kind of seeing paper dolls and they can't tell the difference. And, but the home, the, but those, those artificial frequencies, they're, yeah, they're not the home frequencies and they're not the frequencies of, of nature, like Gaia resonance or 
galactic or source resonance, whatever, you know, all of that. So it is getting, it's interesting, you know, there is a mass awakening, but there's also kind of a, a pushback on it in a lot of ways too. It's Yeah, I call it a big construction project. Yeah. And when you're constructing something, there's a big mass in between. Mm. <laughs> Pardon our dust. <laughs> Pardon our dust from the construction, you know. And, and we could change the plans tomorrow, right? Mm. Oh, so there's a new, yeah. I, I reflect on um, a point in time. It was in 2009, I was in Egypt. And one of my many journeys, I've been back about 12 times now. And this year will be lucky 13. Mm -hmm. um, I was meditating on the balcony one, one day and I wanted to know what this great awakening that everybody was talking about, what does it really mean? You know, there's a lot of great books and explanations written, but for me, what did that mean? Mm -hmm. And my guides appeared and said to me, imagine today you're a caterpillar. Yeah. And tomorrow you're a butterfly. And beware, there will be many charlatans among you. Yeah, it's true. And so as just jump off what you just said about all of this noise and incredible work that many people are doing, and then there's a lot of distractions mm -hmm. of people that are just looking at this field or um, aspect to cash in and it's true. Um, yeah. you know and it's fake and then you get what you pay for right and then then that becomes yeah. the journey and the lesson it's but you know what's interesting i notice is that there's really nothing new under the sun <laughs> that the charlatans there that that is some i would say some of the people that we would say are charlatans some of them actually don't realize that they're you know, right. what they're onto. And it, and they've just kind of moved into an ego 2.0. And then some people, I think, very, very much know it and are just taking advantage of it, sort of like, it's, it's like if you think about all of the religious tropes where there's been a millenarianism or there's some kind of like end times date, there are also prosperity preachers. And you know what I mean? Like, the, it's, there's nothing new. Yeah. <laughs> like there's nothing new. It's the same tropes, but it's weird because it's got a different outfit and people aren't picking up on the fact that it's the exact we haven't come up with any new tricky tools they're all the same old tricky tools <laughs> i mean like fundamentalism is at an all-time high and it's not just in the church it's people saying us versus them well we've all decided that this is the way and so definitely the them are this and it's witch hunting and it's mccarthyism i I mean, I'm on a thing now, but you know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, no, I there's it. nothing new. <laughs> well, and, and it is about this sense of duality, right? It's mm -hmm. either right or wrong, good yes. or bad. Black and white thinking. That's... And that is shifting. And that's where mm. we got to get to that completely neutral zone yeah. of, well, what if black is really white? And mm -hmm. what if it's neither? Yeah. And being open to exploring you know, when I started my journey, well, I didn't like intend on it, <laughs> but, but, you know, it's like, you don't just say, okay, today I'm going to wake up, you know, it's not yeah. like that. Yeah. And yeah. It sort of creeps in on you. But when that started happening, I, um, I didn't know where it was headed. I didn't know, but I started to relax. Well, what if what I'm seeing is, is even though it's contradicting what I was taught, well, what if it's true? You know, mm -hmm. what if what I'm sensing, you know, we can talk about even some political things. Well, what if what they're saying is not the reality? Yeah. So I just started questioning a lot yeah. and listening, listening, listening. Mm -hmm. This is so amazing. I, uh, You know, the thing about an NDE or an astral projection and everything is that it's some, it brings some kind of certainty back because it is, it's a real spiritual experience. You know what I mean? Like that, that body, you, you are able to identify it as realistically as we can identify with the, this physical body. And, um, so it triggered that awakening for you in a whole different way. And how, so how have you been since then? And once you got past the paper doll stage, thank goodness, well, <laughs> what, what have you been doing to help people? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I started 22 years ago is mm -hmm. guiding people to manage their energy system. 
Yeah. which is understanding the chakras and clearing away those hidden invisible blocks that we can't find or see or know they're there. And as we do that, we gently unfold or begin to lighten up, pun, yeah. pun intended, and, 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 and explore our spiritual gifts because they just start getting turned on. And the biggest work, I think, is ultimately just clearing away what we are not. And in my new book, yeah. I'm just... Um, finishing up with that is, and, and the ebook version is on my website, but it's the okay. essential guide to spiritual awakening yes. is we are waking up to what we are not and reconnecting with what we are. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the simplest thing I can say is we, we have super psychic spiritual abilities that want to be guiding us, showing us. And I think there's, I think there's going to be way more spiritual abilities than we've already identified. Like, okay, yes. walking through walls or. Yeah. <laughs> Telekinesis. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I, I really know. am excited. I'm so excited for it because I'm, and, and the other thing is people need teachers like you and I, and many others to help them understand that they're not losing their mind. It is grounding. Like you said, it's about grounding. It's like, no, this is normal. This is okay. This is natural. And sure, it's like it's special because every every flake of snow is special and unique, but at the same time, it's normal, you know? And so it does require grounding while uh, while ascending, I guess, at the same time, you know? Being able to and adjust in that with that frequency as they both can dance, mm -hmm. you know, symbiotically. Yes. So you you have your book, and then there is the you do a chakra. Um, is it is it like group or do you do no, individual uh, services? Well, How do you work? The, the way I've been working is I work one on one. So mm -hmm. this mentoring program is partly online, and then partly I go in weekly to check sort of give you an energetic, you know, refresh. So a lot of times when we're on our journey, we're not realizing that we'll only reach a certain threshold until somebody helps us release what we can't see or access. Mm -hmm. And so it's like a refinement each week yeah. that I work with the person one on one. Yeah. So it is it is individual. It's a very highly specialized, you know, process because yeah. I believe each of our journeys is so unique. And our history is so unique. Right. So that's the way I work. Um, but I'm really excited that the Egypt trip is coming. You don't have to have a near-death experience. In fact, it's preferable. <laughs> it's preferable. We, <laughs> that you don't. <laughs> yeah, no, but it will, for people that are already on their journey and are awakening to a higher version of where they're at or to access or just curious. I mean, it's it's just mind-blowing. Wow. What amazing work. This has been so fun. <laughs> I can talk to you for forever. Really, this is very exciting. And so you have a lot of you have a lot of uh, offers that were put in the description. And so as we as we're wrapping up here, I just want to see if you have a sense of like where we're going. There's a mass awakening, there's pushback on it. The black and white thinking is having to get neutralized and you know, there are people who are I mean, there's a sense, there's a feeling different perspectives about there's going to be a big change in seven to 10 years or in 2027, a new shift. We're going to change background frequency. Do you have any, have you been getting any of those prophetic kinds of senses about what's happening, whether on a timeline or not? You know what I mean? Well, um, you know, I'm just reflecting back on a channeled message I got from the Arcturians Great. and, you know, I just keep seeing gears shifting. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing shifting gears and being able to, um, it's like being in a gear within a gear. And so at this time, I'm seeing so much ultimately um, interdimensionally that's affecting us that we haven't really been able to internalize or even um, logically interpret. I, I'm, yeah. It's just really beyond my words at this time. Right. But I think the most, again, I just reiterate the fact that to be grounded and yeah. begin letting go gently of what we are not. And we don't know what that is, but we have to, you know, safely and proactively let go of programming. And uh -huh. so as we do that, more of those gears can help us sort of negotiate the next level. 
Love it. Wow, this has been so great, Amira. I really appreciate, I mean, the depth of wisdom, the groundedness. It's so, so important. And it feels, just feels right. Just feels right, right? To be grounded. It feels. It, it, it's yummy. I mean, it's mm-hmm. just real. It's like present time um, connections and downloads and mm-hmm. receptivity. Yeah. I think that's the challenge is being able to tune in and stay grounded, make things yeah. practical and real for us. So thank How you. does one today, uh, as, if you want to think of something like, can you give a tip to someone to, to you know, avoid having an NDE in order to, <laughs> 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 what is something we can do that's sustainable uh, and uh, start to work with that groundedness and that ascension process at the same time? Well, one of my students recently explained that everywhere he goes throughout the day, his mindfulness of practice is attaching a grounding cord to the base of his spine. So that whatever comes down the pipe, whether it's a news flash or a new announcement or an unexpected event, that he has a way to channel that energy, to still be present and be receptive, but to let what is causing resistance flow away. So we walk around imagining we've got a USB plug, you know, connected Mm -hmm. to our our base of our spine, to the center of the earth that just follows us. And um, I, I find that fun and it's it's playful and it just shifts our focus very quickly. It also restores the, the connection with our with our mother Gaia, you know, trusting that Absolutely. she's going to take away compost, send to the light, disintegrate and reintegrate for us. And so I think that's that's really beautiful. I use the grounding cord every every day, at least in the morning, but I do think about it many times a day as well. Yes, yeah, wonderful. and, and we got to keep refreshing, right? Mm-hmm. Like you have to refresh your screen. Sometimes you think you're grounded, but you've been knocked off course by something. And yes. it could be just energy. It's not something you did or didn't do. Right. Sometimes we just lighten up. Like you say, you don't need to dissect it. Sometimes it's the best yeah. thing to do is just lighten Stop up. Stop already. <laughs> Stop <laughs> Stop it. We make me nuts. <laughs> All right. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you so much for that. And thank you for being on. Uh, You're just really amazing. Thanks for doing the work that you're doing. Thank you, sweetie. You're doing amazing light work yourself. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you for holding the, holding the line. (laughs) Yes. Amen. I hope you are as inspired as I am right now, both to continue that remembering of all it is that we are, our whole self, our whole spiritual self, the intergalactic and interdimensional connections, as well as the interdimensional connection to our own earth, to our bodies, to this wonderful, beautiful journey and experience. I truly do, personally, it's it's how <laughs> it's how I'm calibrated. I see just as much magic in the earth experience in in connecting telepathically and physically in all of the different ways with this earth and her creatures as well as much as I do with you know shooting through the stars as we talked about really to me that's they're they're one in the same maybe it's paradoxical but I think when we get close to paradox we are close to God okay And that's what I have for you from this episode of the Charmed Life Podcast. I hope to hear from you sometime in the comments or in a review. And with that, thanks for tuning in. I love you, whoever you are. 